Welcome, don't clap your hands, hey. Welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to a one-off video in which I am going to do, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I have this guitar. It is an early descendant. I'm not entirely sure when, but uh, yeah, it's a custom shop descendant made with Zebrano, thin back plates, Zebrano neck. We stopped using Zebrano quite a while ago and we've still got this guitar hanging around. The neck is a little bit thinner than we've the, the, the modern versions. I've got a slightly thicker neck and there's bits and pieces. And I thought I would have a play. I want to carve a design of some sort into the upper bout, lower bout, shoulder bout, this half of a bout, all about carving. I, I don't know. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure what that design is going to be. I'm just going to start drawing on the guitar and we will figure it out there and then. Uh, I'm kind of thinking geometric chip carving style something. Now, my original thought would, would, was, was paisley, but a paisley pattern into the Zebrano didn't look very good. Now, I'm thinking the opposite. I'm actually thinking to carve through the six mil Zebrano top right into the ash below, hoping that the joint is a good one. And uh, yeah, looking in the pickup cavity, it seems okay. Um, and we'll see what happens. Basically, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to play. And then uh, uh, if necessary, <clears throat> if it doesn't look good, i.e. The, the grain and the crossover between the ash and the Zebrano, etc., etc. If that doesn't look good, <clears throat> then I can always copper leaf inside what I've carved and, or fill it with resin or something. I don't know, we can, we can always do more. Uh, so with that safety net behind me, let's get carving. Did I look slightly psychotic there? I think I looked slightly psychotic there. Okay, I'm thinking we go straight through the center of the pickup. And that's our starting point. So that's the center of the pickup. Maybe there, it's uh, offset from that hole. Let's do, oh, of course, because so the control pot is bigger than the switch will be. Well, essentially it's relatively random. Relatively random. Okay, and I'm just going to draw on this guitar and then we'll see what happens. Alright, that gives me a starting point. Oh, new toy. I found this, uh, found this at the vintage tool. Uh, in a box of tools. <clears throat> okay, let's count. So the meeting point of here is in the middle of the pickup and what I do from this point I don't know. There was, I was thinking about doing sort of a sweeping organic type thing. Problem with that is uh, sweeping organic type things are easy and it's also what I'm doing on the 90 hour build right now. So. There's limitations that you get with having a guitar because there are certain things that you you have to have on the instrument. Really. So this whole section needs to be... I need a block of wood in there at the center point so that I can use a compass. 
That's what I need. Okay. Uh, that's cold. That actually fits perfectly. There's no movement, so uh, I don't need to glue it in or anything. That's, uh, that's totally by design, 100%. That's my point. I need to get some lead in my pencil. This is gonna be a bit of a long process, so I am going to set up a not stop motion, it is. I was supposed to be a joke. I was supposed to be pretending that I forgot what this process was called. Time lapse, there we go. And in pretending that I'd forgotten, I completely wiped my own mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, stop motion. Here we go. Seriously, I had no idea where that was going. Uh, we've ended up with a sun motif of sorts, I suppose. Uh, and even through that process, I was debating whether I should cut through to the ash below uh, or, or not, or try and have a, a more um, homogenous plan and, and lighter cuts, etc. But I am going to do that. I'm going to cut straight through to the ash. It's going to add points of interest to, uh, I hope, the whole instrument. And we'll see. I'm just playing. I, I've never done this. I mean, this is chip carving, I suppose. I've never done this before. Um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to grab a mallet and some sharp tools and uh, make it so. So I have a cavity back here to about here. So I just want to, yeah, draw that. I can't go too deep at this point, uh, which is fine. This one's going to be smaller. I'm going to, I'm going to radiate it out actually. So it'll go from shallow at these two ends to deeper at this point. Yeah, and uh, see what happens. This is a double bevel chisel, which should be good for this task. And then essentially, cut to cut type thing. Alternatively, I could just use a normal chisel, of which I have a few. So 
something tells me this is untenable. <laughs> I am not a vlogger. <laughs> All right, I, I think I feel more comfortable with a standard single bevel chisel. I think. But we will see how this evolves. Over this process. I'm going to film this bit. Uh, yeah, I'm going to film this bit uh, in, in real time. And you guys can see that. And then we're going to go back to, back to time lapse. I think I called it stop motion earlier. Uh, yeah, we're going to go back to time lapse and see where we end up. I'm slightly confused by grain and grain direction and all that jazz. And I suspect this is actually slightly too large for what I'm doing. Do I? No, of course I should V gouge in from there as well. This is a, haha, -ha, I'm showing off and E pressed in Vigo, it's so cool. Okay, so we gouge it. What I need is a curved Vigo, I just need to go this deep. and see what else I've got. It's another Preston actually. Uh, okay. Lots of gouges. Not very many chisels. Aha, uh -huh. hello. I know, gouge. What I'm after is a smaller double bevel chisel. Which I just don't have. It's about as close as I'm gonna get. It's official. I can't see you. There you are, hello. Hi, how you doing? It's official, I need more tools.
Okay, and then go in that way with, ah, with this. Yes. So earlier on, you might have thought, my goodness, he's got lots of carving tools. Nobody needs that many carving tools. And they just aren't. I don't have enough, actually. Uh, I need more. There are tools for each individual job. And uh, you are going to come across random things that uh, just need something different. I'm biased. <laughs> I have a tool shop, of course. But, uh, but most woodcarvers would agree with me. And I don't class myself as a woodcarver yet. I class myself as a as a beginning, somebody starting out on that journey. And here we have it. I am uncertain. I'm uncertain whether I'm finished or not. I really don't know. There's a little bit of glue line there. gets better as we go around. I was thinking about adding a diamond there. And I am still thinking about filling in the gaps and uh, I don't know, doing something. 
When is enough enough? When is enough enough? I can do so much more. What do you think? Let me know. <laughs> By the time you see this, I will probably have done something or not done something. So we'll see. Anyhow, uh, there is there is tidying up to do. There is cleaning each one of these things. They're still a little bit rough. Oh, so tactile. So tactile. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Um, anyway, I probably have to continue the design over onto the headstock in some way, shape, or form. And I suspect I might be doing a little bit more, in which case this is a preemptive ending to the video. Uh, or, or not, we'll see, there might be a part two. There will probably be a part two. There will be a part two because there's still sanding. There's still sanding or scraping. There's... Oh, we need to see the finished guitar, don't we? So uh, thank you for watching. Click like, click subscribe. Hit that bell button so you get notifications and uh, that you can, uh, well, hopefully not ignore. And uh, <coughs> consider supporting our Patreon. Uh, our Patreon supporters, the $10 and up supporters, got to see the raw footage, this raw footage that I'm doing right now. They got to see that um, a lot earlier than uh, the final video went out. So uh, consider that. Anyhow, I just wanted to say thank you for supporting us. Be good. <laughs> I'm in a good mood. Um, I've got to get this footage off to the media department so that it can be transferred into our backup so we don't lose it. And uh, then I can go home in the snow. It's snowing. It's properly actually snowing in Dorset. Anyway, goodbye. Ramble, ramble, ramble. Rambly, rambly man.